Uh, obviously, uh, you know, difficult day uh, for America and uh, our great country. And, uh, you know, obviously, uh, we've got some local issues that you may or may not be aware of, but I wanted to make you aware of them. Uh, in our largest city, which, uh, uh, which is also, uh, they've sort of demonized and defunded the police <laughs> in Atlanta, Georgia, that it's, it's unsafe. In fact, it, uh, they're trying to separate parts of the city so that other folks get protection. It's just a mess. But uh, uh, I'd like to make you aware of a politically, uh, a politically motivated lesson plans taught in one of Georgia's largest public school districts. The Atlanta Public Schools is opposing Georgia's new election law and voter identification. Uh, because I am concerned that our students in Atlanta public schools are receiving one-sided information on this bill to advance a candidate for offices, office and their political aims. I want you to know that I wrote a letter to the Georgia Department of Education about this concern. In fact, this week, Georgia had their primary election under Georgia's new election law, and early voting increased 212 uh, percent above compared to 2020. Uh, so I think we need to move away from injecting bias, political indoctrination in the classroom and, and teach comprehensive facts on issues. Are you aware of this, Mr. Uh, Secretary? Um, so specific to the issue in Georgia, I can't comment. Uh, curricular decisions are made at the local level. Um, and what, what I can tell you, however, is the way our, our system is set up is states and local municipalities are the ones who pass curriculum. And um, it would be important for uh, communication to those bodies uh, take place. What I will tell okay. you is that curriculum should uh, be the truth, should be the truth. And um, it should cover um, you know, what makes this country so great, uh, but include uh, the, the parts that we're not so proud of as well. Yeah. Uh, well, but again, uh, Mr. Chairman, we don't work with curriculum here at the department. True. That would be my my opinion based on myself as an educator. Right. Two right. Yeah. Yeah. There's a big debate on what is the truth, and I, I I would like to, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to submit this letter for the record, please. No objection. Okay. Uh, Mr. Secretary, in your testimony, you stated that you're committed to reversing funding inequities. Uh, there's nothing more inequitable than a wealthy parent being able to send their child to any school they want. But outdated education policy is telling low-income parents they can't have the same opportunities. We don't, want to, we don't want to lose one child in this country. The idea of school choice is not public versus private schools, but the opportunity for parents to choose the best school for their child, regardless of the zip code, whether that, is, that be a traditional public, private, charter, or faith-based school. Last year, I asked you if you would support the idea of school choice, and you could not give me a direct answer. So I ask you, Mr. Secretary, will you embrace the idea of school choice to allow every student to flourish in the learning environment they are best suited for? Yes, I do support uh, okay. choice. OK, great. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Secretary, another issue I would like to discuss is the lack of uh, transparency being taught in the classroom, specific, specifically lessons stemming uh, critical race theory. I am proud that the Georgia State Board of Education adopted a resolution affirming they will they will work to prevent promote promotion of divisive ideologies. Parents want an education system that will allow their students to gain skills needed to obtain good paying jobs and that will allow them to be successful. Uh, I, I, I hope you will be committed to addressing these issues and to supporting school choice in the department's budget. Thank you. All right. Well, Mr. Chairman, I yield back. 